Good evening, I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. Thank you for watching. Consider this. Come, the upcoming Tanjung Pia by election is set to be a much watched affair, as this is Barisan National's first electoral outing since the announcement of the Amno Pass Charter of Cooperation. So, joining us on the show to discuss the politics of the day, we have Bridget Welsh. She is an honorary research associate of the Asia Research Institute at the University of Nottingham, Malaysia. Welcome back to the show, Bridget. It's good to have you back. Great to be here, Melissa. Sure. Okay, so you wrote an opinion piece recently about the uh, November 16th Tanjung Pia by-election. You said in that piece that this is going to be a by-election that is a test of pub the level of public support that uh, Dr. Mahathir's uh, of Dr. Mahathir's leadership of Pakatan Harapan. Now, I'm just wondering why you think this by-election is particularly important and is considered a bellwether for the Prime Minister's leadership. Well, it's actually two tests. One is for Barisan National, which I'll get to discuss later, mm -hmm. but for, the, for, for Tun Mahathir, uh, if we look at the seat uh, in, and we analyze the voting patterns, uh, this seat was won particularly as a result of the Mahathir factor in GE18. G14, right? Last year. And so we saw some Malay swing, uh, a move on younger voters, a uh, uh, move among women, especially Malay women. Uh, and so he was, his, the Bursatu pull was particularly a salient in Johor and Kedah, but it was also, and, and it contributed to this seat a, as a victory. Mm. So that's one dimension. The second aspect of it is, is that it, you know, it is coming after uh, a, a considerable amount of time, a, a year, almost a year and a half after to GE14. And in, in a sense, uh, it's, it's not a kind of p uh, pull factors at right after the election. So, and we see, we, we do have a, a kind of assessment of certain factors that are coming in on the economy, in issues of policy. So it does provide this kind of bellwether dimension. Right, so it's a kind of a maturing of the Pakatan government as it stands. But what about, you know, ordinary people? Do they really uh, uh, see the difference? I mean, are they, th do they imagine, as political analysts might, that you know, leadership by Anwar versus Mate might be significant in terms of policies and such? Or is it just the general Pakatan Harapan administration that's going to be, as it were, in the dock? for this by-election? I think it's, it's PH that's in the dock, uh, but I think it's Mahathir at the helm of PH. Uh, but yeah, so it's this, these two things together. All right. And um, you, you said that this is two tests, right? So one as the bellwether for Pakatan Harapan's leadership uh, mm -hmm. since they won uh, Putrajaya, and the second test is for Barisa National. Right. Did you elaborate? Well, it is the candidate his is a BN candidate, uh, so he's fra from um, MCA. And uh, what we see is, uh, you know, MCA MCA has, done, has eroded its support uh, since 2008, mm. uh, but particularly in 2013. Uh, and they lost uh, you know, massively. They have only one seat. So this is an attempt to 100% it to win <laughs> a, 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 a second seat. Uh, um, and in, for MCA in particular, you know, if they lose this, it's, it's really, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a significant... Uh, uh, is it a nail in the coffin? I don't like to use those words uh, that because I think parties will survive uh, in, if they have money and resources, and, and MCA does have money. Um, but I think uh, uh, in terms, it will it will be a, a crossroads that they'll have to consider uh, mm -hmm. in that context. But I but let's go back to Barisan National, yep. and that in the sense that what we're looking at is a new Barisan National, right? A Barisan National worth pass in mm -hmm. the Unity Charter. So it's one that is ha kind of Malay nationalist, Malay chauvinist in terms of its orientation. At the same time, it's it's, it's fielding a non-Malay candidate right. as part of the coalition. So it's a, uh, it, it's, it's can determines whether or not it was going to get multi-ethnic support in a multi-ethnic seat um, and be able to be a contender for national power. Uh, I want to come to those kind of characteristics of the seat and, and if you could tell us something about it, as you as a researcher looking at the broad picture, not just at Tanjung Pia, uh, how important are by-elections and what are the, the factors that drive uh, results at that level? I mean, some countries, it seems that you know, by-elections are not national elections. They have very different dynamics. They're about local issues or national issues. It, do you have a sense of, of what the dynamics by-elections have in Malaysia? 
Well, first of all, by-elections get tremendous amount of media attention yes. in Malaysia compared to other countries. So they're, you know, they become the news story, like this program. <laughs> all right, for, uh, which and is it disproportionate? <laughs> I mean, are we too quick to call everything a bellwether by-election? Of course, uh, <laughs> but of course, uh, we're, uh, but uh, sometimes we're accurate and sometimes we're not. All right, in, in this area. So, and, and it's fair to say that it's probably a bellwether of some things and not others. Mm. Right, and, and in that context, and I think here issues that have been predominant in the in the political uh, landscape issues of race, uh, issues of uh, religion, issues of kind of leadership. Those are the things that are probably more salient than other factors, uh, the, um, such as, say, for example, is the coalition completely going to be functional? Right? But it would be a marker of that. Right. So um, I think, yes, um, Malaysia's by-elections are different, not just for media coverage, but they're also different in the sense that they get a lot more political attention from the leadership. Mm. Uh, and they're often, you know, leaders go down, they spend resources, Sources uh, and and by elections differ from regular elections in that they are they they have the entire machinery of parties that are focused in those areas. So you know when you're in a by election, you know, th there's traffic. Yes. <laughs> like, uh, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's everyone like, converges, right? It's a it's can be a little bit like a political party, mm. or, uh, you know, in the sense that there's uh, a set of festivities of different sides uh, and a oh, real party, you mean? Yeah, uh, yeah, a real uh, of course. Okay. What yeah. are the best times? Yeah. What are the best times, right? Yeah, okay. But uh, but. It, but it is a, 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 a kind of a, it brings it brings people together. Right. Uh, um, uh, uh, but it also is, it, it can be over uh, over um, intensified in those areas. Mm. So we can sometimes uh, be not necessarily a reflection of reality. Actually, I, I do want to um, follow on that point. You know, the point that you made about media coverage of this. And you, you brought up a good point, uh, Bridget, about the tremendous coverage that the media gives, blanket coverage on every by-election, uh, regardless of whether it is actually as uh, important to the dynamics of the local politics. Now, I'm just wondering whether the media covers by-elections, uh, How what your perception of how the media covers by-elections? Well, I think like this piece, uh, the election hasn't started, the campaign hasn't started. Uh, from the, its campaign started, but in the sense that it's not the, the, the nomination period is coming and mm. so forth. And so what we see is a situation where um, the focus is national. But often, by-elections do get driven by local concerns. Right. Uh, and in places like the seat, uh, for example, environmental issues are extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, and the conditions uh, for how development is being carried out in this particular so seat. So the media should be focusing on these local issues to be covering by-elections properly. I think local factors are, are, are crucial. Um, uh, recognizing and hearing multiple voices. Uh, you know, I think one of the problems is, is that, that the political frames that we use to analyze elections are very narrow. Mm -hmm. And as a consequence, um, uh, we tend to you know, be asking, you know, what do you think of the leaders of Pakatan, uh, uh, as opposed to you know, what things really matter to you. What, what, you know, this type of, so it's a different set of questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, very quickly, I understand that you know, uh, political parties are loath to lose by-elections, or any elections for that matter. But do you think this overemphasis on by-elections, when it doesn't actually change, say, the, the political standing in, in the state or uh, the Parliament level uh, means that practices like um, announcing goodies for the local uh, electorate become uh, part of the the campaign promises, and that and that could be a violation of actually campaigning laws. And we've had that already. Uh, announcements of millions of dollars to be spent for Tanjung Pi specific types of projects. Mm. Well, the issue of money politics is, is a very important one. And I think there are some areas that are gray and then some areas that are illegal. Uh, and announcing before the campaign is still gray. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah, just to be fair in those areas. And it happens multiple places, not just Malaysia. But the use of money in the voting process during the campaign uh, to contribute to convince people to vote different ways is, is definitely something that I think we should be watching for and, uh, and, and flag. You know, I, I was joking with a friend saying one of the things that might happen in this by-election is that it, it may end up having to have another by-election yeah, <laughs> if, there, if there are too much money that's actually being spent uh, down there. Uh, yeah, and, and I think this is where uh, uh, they're very, very, um, uh, because the stakes are high. And, mm. I, and let me just go back to you in the sense that I agree it won't affect the parliament numbers and it won't affect the state numbers on the surface. But the numbers in Parliament, given the negotiations that are happening between actors, 
one seat will is important and whose camp that it is in uh, is actually uh, essential. And I also would say that uh, it goes back to these issues of tests. It does set a, a direction for Barasa National or for Tun Mahathir. I mean, if he loses this election, let us recognize that there will be more calls for him to step down earlier. Right. All right. We're going to continue our conversation about the upcoming Tanjung Pia by election right here on Consider This. Stay tuned.